Hello everybody, Silver Picker here and welcome to the Silver Picker Squad. Now today's video is all about making money with fancy serial numbers. Now we're talking the most unique and unusual serial numbers printed on dollar bills that can make you big bucks. And as you can see, to get into the fancy mindset, I'm wearing my fancy blazer, I'm wearing my fancy watch, I got my fancy pinky ring, nothing says fanciness like a pinky ring, and I've got my fancy cup of tea in my fancy Galaxy Morgan mug. Now if you want to be fancy as well, you guys can get your very own fancy Galaxy Morgan mug in many different fancy colors just using the links below to my Teespring store. And guess what? Not only does it support my channel, but it'll also help you become fancier and fancier and fancier. But in all seriousness, please buy a mug and support my channel. Okay, okay, in actual all seriousness, Hunting for fancy serial numbers is an amazing way for new collectors or people that want to get into the business of buying and selling precious metals, coins, and banknotes to get started. And in this video, I'm going to teach you exactly how to identify the most common and most popular fancy serial numbers, figure out which ones are worth holding on to and which ones really are better to be spent back into circulation. I'm going to teach you how to get these banknotes at face value and most important and most exciting, how you can sell them and flip them for a profit. If you enjoy this video, I would really appreciate it if you'd consider hitting the like button. And if you're feeling real generous, maybe you'd even consider hitting that big old red subscribe button and the little bell next to it so you're notified whenever I post a new video. I would be eternally grateful. But enough with the jibber jabber, let's get started with that fanciness. So what are we even talking about here? Well, every single dollar bill, whether it's a 1 or a 100, is printed with a unique 8-digit serial number on it. That's right, every single bill is unique. There are no two banknotes in the world that are alike. And what the real purpose of this is it helps the government track where the money flows and it helps prevent theft and counterfeiting. And while to the untrained eye, these series of eight digits might just look like random numbers, to the collector, some arrangements of these numbers actually can make the bills not just worth a little bit more than face value, but even thousands of dollars worth more than the number printed on that bill. Also, I should point out that even though we're going to be focusing on US banknotes in this video, every single banknote in the entire world has a serial number on it and therefore has the potential for fancy serial numbers. So if you're watching from somewhere outside the US, first of all, I'd love to know where, so drop that in the comments below, but you can also apply everything I'm talking about in this video to your local currency. So the United States produces literally billions of banknotes every single year, but only a tiny fraction of them actually have a collector's premium, and those are the ones you want to pull out of circulation. And like I said, those can be worth literally thousands of dollars, so you're going to want to pay attention. So I'm now going to show you the nine main types of fancy serial numbers that you should look for and pull out of circulation. Now it's important to note that I am not going to be focusing on star notes or error notes. If you want to learn more about star notes, I made a video on it a few weeks ago and you can check it out in the card over here. I've never made a video on error notes, so stay tuned. So anyway, let's get started with our first fancy serial number and what better way to start than, well, <laughs> with number one. So what you see here is an extreme example of what's called a low serial number banknote. And those are any banknotes that have one or two non-zero digits at the end of the serial number. So that's any bill numbered 1 through 99. Now finding any banknote with a serial number under 100 is going to be exceedingly difficult, but if you do, you're looking at some big bucks. Now of course, any of the bills we're talking about, the value is highly dependent aside from the fancy serial number on the actual year, the actual print size, and of course the actual condition of the particular bill. This heavily circulated $10 bill from 2013 sold for $220 because it has the serial number of 00000007. So it is a very low serial number, it's James Bond as well, but it sold for $220, which is phenomenal. It's 22 times face value. But because of the condition and because it is number seven and not number one, it didn't sell for thousands. This $1 bill, however, which has the coveted serial number one from the same year, which is in much better condition, actually sold for over $8,000. So while there's a huge difference between the values of these two banknotes, one thing's for sure, if you find any low digit serial numbers, you're gonna wanna keep them no matter matter what. Now if you've gone and paused this video and ran to get your wallet or your banknote collection to see if you have any low serial numbers and you're excited to find that you have some, 
but instead of having two non-zero digits, it has three or four, don't be disappointed because even though those are not worth hundreds or thousands of dollars more than their face value, those can still be worth five, 10, or even $20 worth more than face value. So if you've got a $1 bill and it's number 999, that doesn't mean you should spend it. Still worth holding on to. So the second fancy serial number we're going to be looking at is the inverse to the low serial numbers, and that is, of course, high serial numbers. And by high serial numbers, we mean any banknote that has a serial number that starts with at least four nines. But if it has five, six, seven, or even all solid nines, that is a special, special bill. Now, unfortunately, because banknotes made in the modern era don't usually have print runs that are that high, they're really, really hard to find in most cases. However, if you've got any old banknotes or silver certificates or something like that, definitely take the time to look through those because you might just find a gem hiding in your collection. As you can see here, in most cases, the high serial numbers are worth far less than the super low serial numbers. Like this $1 bill from 1963 only sold for $21.50. Still, 21 and a half times face value ain't too bad, but it's not the thousands of dollars we were talking about. And while this set of 12 $10 bills sold for $2,000, that's still only about $167 per bill. Still, way more than face value and worth holding on to, but not quite as good as those super low serial numbers. The next fancy serial number is called solids, and that is basically a solid row of the same number. So those are exceedingly rare because there can only be 10 of each per run of bills. So that means all zeros, all ones, all twos, all threes, all the way up through nines. So there's literally only 10 per print run at most, and that makes them worth a lot of money even in super, super ratty shape. This crumpled up $5 bill with solid sevens sold for nearly $800. But this pristine $1 bill with solid threes sold for $3,500. Not too shabby at all. The nice thing about solids is that they're really easy to spot when you're searching for them. Even almost solids like this $10 bill can also sell for a pretty good premium, so they're worth holding on to as well, especially the ones that are aesthetically pleasing like this one. And while we're on the subject of solids, do me a solid by hitting the like button and the subscribe button. Now I know that a lot of you watching are not actually subscribed and you guys are missing out on tons of awesome numismatic information. So do us both a solid by hitting that subscribe button and that like button. Next up are binaries and trinaries. Binaries are bills with serial numbers composed of only two different digits. And trinaries, of course, are bills with serial numbers composed of only three different digits. Now, a true binary is bills that have serial numbers composed only of zeros and ones. But any two numbers can be a binary. So 22121121 could be a binary, or the same number but with a different order, also a binary. Now, a trinary could be 2222213, or it could be 2311322. With binaries and trinaries, the order of the digits doesn't matter. I think you get the point. The value of binaries and trinaries is highly correlated with the aesthetic beauty of the actual serial number. So let's play a game. What do you think is worth more? A serial number of 11111112? or a serial number of 111-1117. Pretty obvious, right? The one with the one and a two at the end versus the one and the seven, because the one two feels like a natural progression and is therefore more aesthetically pleasing. Okay, let's try this again. Which of these bills, the 50 or the 100, sold for more money at auction? I'll give you a second to log your guesses. Put it in the comments below. I'll give you a second. Well, if you guess the 50, you were right. The $50, even though it's a lower denomination than the 100, because it is bookended with ones and only zeros in the middle, it is much more aesthetically pleasing than the $100 bill. So the $50 bill sold for $900 at auction, while the 100 sold for only 432. Still, both of them are good, good finds. Now before we move on, I'm going to point out that there are lots and lots of different subtypes of all of these different serial number categories, but they're really just the same thing that have different aesthetically pleasing components to them. So I'll give you one example, but you can look up the rest on your own, and that example is double quads. 
Double quads is when you have four of the same number followed by four of a different number. So for example, three, 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 nine, 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 nine. That's an example of a double quad. But if you really look close, it's really just a fancy example of a binary. So really you're looking at a binary that has an additional premium because it has a really aesthetically pleasing organization. So I don't want you guys to get too bogged down in all of these subtypes because at the beginning you're going to go crazy trying to remember all of them and it's not going to be fun. So at the beginning, hold off on the subtypes and as you get to become a fancy serial number expert, you can then go more and more and more into those different subtypes. Next up are repeaters, and those are easy enough to remember because, well, they have repeating digits. So an example could be one, two, one, two, one, two, one, two, or it could be four digits repeating, one, three, three, one, one, three, three, one. Both of those have a premium, but can you guess which one has more of a premium? So again with repeaters, let aesthetics be your guide in terms of value. This $100 bill with a super repeater, so that's just two repeating digits, sold for $900, while this $50 bill with four digits repeating, like in that first example, the 1331-1331, it only sold for $79, which is just $29 above face. So a huge, huge difference between two repeating digits and four repeating digits. The next fancy serial number to keep on your radar is well, a radar note. A radar note is any serial number that can be read both forwards and backwards the same, kind of like the word radar. Or in other words, they are palindrome notes. Well, at least I think they should be called palindrome notes, but I don't make the rules. So radars they are. Well, a great example of a radar is this bill which sold for $763 and that has a serial number of 007700. And as you can see, and you've probably noticed, that there's quite a bit of overlap in these fancy serial number categories because not only is this a radar, but it is also a binary. So let that be a lesson. The more fanciness you can squeeze into one serial number, the better. Now before we get to my favorite type of fancy serial number, we're gonna talk about my least favorite fancy serial number, and those are flippers. Flippers, also called rotators, are similar to radars, but instead of being able to be read front to back, they can be read upside down as well. Now, only serial numbers that contain zeros, ones, sixes, eights, and nines can even be counted as flippers because those are the only numbers that look like themselves or other numbers when they're flipped over. So a serial number like 66669999 could be flipped over and the sixes turn into nines and the nines turn into sixes and it can be read the same way. It's kind of cool, it's kind of novel, but to me it's not that exciting and I don't love them. But again, like I said, I don't make the rules so people pay big bucks for them. Or uh, do they? Because this 2017 $10 flipper sold for only $25, practically not even worth listing on eBay. Maybe I'm on to something with these flippers not being as fancy as they seem. And now my favorite fancy serial number is the ladder note. Now there are both ascending and descending ladders and essentially what they are are a string of numbers that go in consecutive order. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8 would be an ascending ladder and 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1 would be a descending ladder. To me they are just super aesthetically beautiful, they're really cool and of course they're worth a lot of money. Now there are of course broken ladders or partial ladders and those are worth a little bit of a premium but nothing like the real McCoy of a real ladder note. This $100 bill with an ascending ladder sold for $4,500. Imagine pulling that out of circulation, not a bad payday. And last but not least are date notes. Date notes are notes that actually form a date when you read them. Now I'm not that into them, but they do sell for some pretty good money, so they are still worth pulling out of circulation. Now there are two types of date notes. There are dates that are historically significant and dates that are personally significant to an individual. An example of a historic date that would be significant would be, on at least on an American note, would be 07041776. Can you guess why? Well, that is July 4th, 1776, which is American Independence Day. So if you can find a banknote with one of those serial numbers, those can actually go for pretty good money. Other ones that are more for personal use are people's birthdays or anniversaries, and simply they just want to have them because it's special to them. A lot of people carry those around as what's called a pocket piece, so they just carry it around with them at all times because they enjoy seeing it, and that's great. And if you find a good birth date or an anniversary date, you can sell that to somebody and make a couple bucks. 
But there are some cool ways of getting creative, and a lot of this would basically be marketing. So for example, you might find a $1 bill with the 02221732 serial number, and that would be, of course, February 2nd, 1732, which is George Washington's birthday. And having George Washington's birthday as the serial number on a $1 bill featuring George Washington could actually be worth quite a bit of money. See if you can play some games like that with other presidents or other figures on banknotes, or around the world with other other world leaders, there might be some really cool things you can come up with. If you do come up with something interesting, let me know in the comments below. Okay, that is a lot of information to be thrown at you, and if you're a beginner, your head is probably swimming. So these are the nine different fancy serial numbers we talked about, so take a second to review them, and if you want to rewatch the video, it might be worth your time. So now that you've got the knowledge, and you know what the different types of fancy serial numbers are, well, how do you actually get them out of circulation for face value? Well, of course you can rely on getting them in change, but that's a fairly slow and luck-based process. You can, of course, improve your odds through a practice called bank strap searching. Bank strap searching is exactly like coin roll hunting if you're familiar with that practice. Essentially, what you do is you go to your bank, you withdraw the bills in whatever denominations you want for whatever sum of money you want, say $1,000 in singles, then you go home, you look through each bill, pull out the ones that have fancy serial numbers, and then just deposit the rest back into your account, effectively allowing you to take as many bills with fancy serial numbers out of circulation for just face value as you want with zero risk to yourself. Now, if you've been watching my channel for a long time, you know that I'm not a huge fan of coin roll hunting, but every now and again, I really do enjoy a relaxing bank strap search. It's easy on the fingers, easy on the eyes, and you can find some really, really cool stuff. So eventually, I will do some videos on that as well, so stay tuned for those. Now, once you've found some fancy serial numbers or things that you think might be fancy serial numbers, go over to either eBay sold listings or Heritage Auctions or another reputable site to see if you can find some comparable items that sold that are similar enough to yours that you can get an idea of the price. You can also, of course, take your bills to your local coin store and ask an expert there, or if you don't have one of those in your area or because of what's going on in the world right now, you don't have access, you can post them on a coin forum like cointalk.com, or if you're one of my patrons, you can post it in the Coin Questions channel on my private Discord server. And if you're not yet a patron, I would love it if you'd consider supporting my mission of informing, educating, and entertaining people all about coin collecting, precious metals investing, and even personal finance. And if you are interested, there are links to my Patreon page below, and that's just patreon.com slash silverpicker. So I would love it if you'd consider pledging to that cause. And once you've got a sense of how much your bills are worth, now it's time to decide whether to keep them in your own collection or to sell them. If you want to keep them in your own collection, great, who knows, maybe they'll be worth more someday when you're ready to sell. But if you're ready to sell right now, the best place to do it is by selling directly to another collector. Whether that's through a coin club that you belong to or on a Facebook group or even Craigslist, you're going to get the best bang for your buck out of that. But if you want to have a wider spread audience or you want to have the luck of the auction help you and see maybe you can get even more money than you expect then eBay or Heritage Auctions are awesome opportunities. You will lose about 10 to 20% of the value through fees, but you'll have access to a much, much broader customer base and you may end up making more money overall. So that's about it. You now have all the information you need to start collecting or flipping banknotes with rare serial numbers for a profit. And it is so much fun to get into, and yes, it is highly addictive. Now, if you like the video, again, please give it a like, subscribe, and of course, share it with your friends. And if you found something really interesting, put it in the comments below. I would love to hear your hunting stories. And of course, I have a lot more awesome coin-related and precious metal-related stuff coming down the pike, so stay tuned, and until then, Silver Picker out. A huge, huge thank you to all of my wonderful patrons. Many of you have taken advantage of the discounted annual membership rate. So if you're not yet a patron but are interested, I've just unlocked a 10% discount for anyone who signs up using the annual membership. Can't wait to see you in the Discord.